Lieutenant Colonel Steve Dean of LMPD. Thank you, Craig. Is everybody good? Yep. All right. Thank you all for coming today. Um, as we close out 2022, um, I know the big topic everybody wants to talk about is violent crime. Um, while our violent crime numbers are still totally unacceptable, it's abundantly clear we are trending in the right direction. Um, however, when we are looking at, uh, you know, we had 14 victims that were under 17 years old of homicides this year. That's a, that, that's a tragic number. Um, we are total non-fatal shootings, um, I think in this year we we're at 421, um, as opposed to last year where we were at 631. So we have a 33% decrease in non-fatal shootings. Um, our homicide numbers, uh, we still have a day to go, uh, but we are at 160, and last year we were at 174. So that's an 8.05% decrease in homicide numbers. Um, the good news is uh, our homicide clearance rate has improved this year uh, to 49.38% uh, clearance rate, where it's traditionally been in the 30s. Um, I think some of the uh, contributing factors to our increased uh, clearance rate is we've begun outsourcing DNA uh, to where we are getting uh, results back a lot quicker. I believe you just saw we just cleared a cold case uh, with a suspect in an arrest in that. Um, we have utilized several crime fighting techniques um, to get us to where we are in our decreases in violent crime. Uh, part of that is we refocused our CID, our Criminal Intelligence Division, to where they focus strictly on uh, violent crime, violent offenders, and not so much the smaller narcotics uh, traffickers. And in doing so, uh, they were able to uh, do long-term investigations on our violent offenders, our upper-level gang leaders, and the trigger pullers and shot callers here in, here in Louisville Metro. And in building those long-term investigations, we were able to utilize our federal partners to prosecute these cases federally. And when I'm, ta I'm not talking about just individuals, they were able to focus in on entire groups and take groups uh, out of the, uh, the public that was fueling a lot of this violent crime. Um, so when we refocus CID, we still have eight patrol divisions. So what we did was we implemented our impact platoons. Uh, they were formerly called flex platoons. We brought them back, they're called impact platoons. We brought them back in the second division first. Uh, very successful, so we implemented them in the first and the fourth, and now we're implementing them in the sixth division. So um, that's giving more resources back to the individual divisions. Um, we have continued the Patrol Bureau of Violent Crime Reduction Detail, uh, which focuses in on hotspot areas where we've had uh, typically large amounts of violence or if we've had a recent shooting or a recent, recent homicide, they'll focus their efforts in those areas. Um, and we have had a tremendous amount of community support by individuals calling in with tips on homicides and shootings and other crimes. Because we as the police, we cannot solve these on our own. It, the community is a vital part and partner to solving these crimes. So I would encourage everyone to continue. If you know something, call in and say something. You know, we need to be able to give uh, these victims and these victims' families closure uh, you know, from the shooting or the death of their loved ones. Um, we've improved uh, technical tools uh, in our investigative processes. Uh, like I said, we've already uh, begun outsourcing DNA, um, utilizing our federal partners for the prosecution. I believe we're uh, over 80 federal indictments so far for the year. And, um, you know, like I said, we, uh, the number that we have is still too high, but we are trending in the right direction. So uh, with that, does anybody have any questions? What would you attribute to uh, the number of shootings and homicides uh, being down this year compared to years past? Like I, yeah, like I said, we, we've, um, we've implemented the impact platoons, which are solely focused in the divisions. 
Um, we have focused on um, uh, the VCR details being in specific hot spot areas. We target those. Uh, we also uh, do canvassing in areas that experience violent crime shootings and things like that. And we actually talk to citizens and we get input back from them. And they, they give us tips and, and information on areas and things we need to focus on there. Um, and, you know, it's, um, we have several hardworking officers that come to work every single day. And we are short, we are hundreds of officers short. But when we see an increase in self-initiated activity, such as uh, traffic citations um, and uh, arrests, these officers are working with less and they're doing a tremendous job every single day. And you know, when we talk about violent crime and we talk about gun violence, um, when you look at how many traffic citations we've uh, issued, uh, it is significantly dropped like tra traffic fatalities uh, because I'm sure we've seen people driving crazy on the roads and we've seen intersections blocked and things like that. So we've, we've also um, added to our traffic unit uh, to help combat some of that as well. Does it make you optimistic that the violent crime will continue to come down in the I would have no reason to believe it wouldn't um, because of the, uh, the practices that we, we've implemented. And we still, we, we will look at what we've implemented and if we need to improve on that, or if there's things that we can tweak and make better, we certainly will. Uh, kind of going based off the uh, downs, hundreds of officer officers, how is recruitment going to try to you know, build that workflow that you need? That well, as our violent crime is trending downward, I believe our recruitment is trending upwards. Uh, we are getting more individuals that are applying to be uh, the police. Uh, we are getting some individuals that have retired or went to other agencies and they're coming back. Um, but I, I think this is a problem we've seen all, all across the country is, you know, uh, a um, uh, lesser amount of police on the streets, but I think that's trending back up as well. The reality is, you know, we're now in the third straight year of over 100 homicides. Um, obviously, we want the trend to continue to go down, but 8%, we all wish that it was higher. Of course. What you do um, next year, because ultimately no one can really predict what 2023 is going to hold. So, Ultimately, what do you do to fight this kind of post-pandemic spike that you've been seeing in recent years? I, I think it's a combination of several things I've already mentioned. We, we, we continue to utilize uh, our CID to focus on your major level traffickers, be able to put long-term investigations with federal indictments. And in doing so with implementing the impact platoons, they can focus on you know, division-specific problems in the area. Uh, continue to lean and, and, and focus with our federal partners to get those federal prosecutions uh, where, you know, those individuals are getting lengthy prison terms. They, you know, when they are going in to prison, they are staying there. It's not like a revolving door where they're being turned back out uh, into the public. So, you know, we're going to continue to, like I said, to focus on those things and we'll continue to have listening sessions with uh, the community and, you know, take their advice and things that they're seeing and build on those relationships. Because like I said, we cannot do this on our own. We need the public to help us as well. And on that, how do you feel that relationship has changed? We've talked with the department quite a bit in recent years about mm -hmm. community relations and engagements, and you have mentioned it today, their input helps close cases a lot of times. Of so course they do. how do we, where are we at now and how do we continue to improve that? I, I, th I think our, our relationships are improving. Um, you know, we have community meetings. We meet with, you know, our faith-based leaders, uh, community leaders. Uh, we do the canvassing. So we, we have those um, relationships and those interactions that are being positive. So, and we need to just, we need to continue those efforts. Is there a specific sort of crime you see a rise in uh, outside of violent crime that you're worried about for the next year? Well, if we could stop stealing Kias and Hyundais, uh, somebody put that YouTube video out. So uh, we saw that increase, uh, which is, you know, social media, somebody puts it out, so everybody's gotta try it. So we did see an increase in car thefts and auto thefts, and it was right about the time that video started coming out. Uh, the, the other thing that um, I, I would wanna bring to everybody's attention, we still have one day to go. Two days to go, one day to go. If you're going to be celebrating on New Year's Eve, don't be shooting guns in the air. Because 
you know, I've, I've already talked about it before. When those bullets go up, they have to come down somewhere. And uh, also as a reminder, in April, uh, Metro Council passed an ordinance where it's illegal to fire a handgun or rifle or any type of firearm within Jefferson County if you're not on a licensed and regulated firing range. Um, firing 300 feet within a house or a house that even may be occupied. It doesn't even have to be occupied. So, you know, that's a misdemeanor now, and it's uh, punishable by up to 12 months incarceration and up to a $500 fine. And generally, it's just not a good idea to be firing a gun in either into the air or into a well-populated area. With um, just looking at the homicide clearance rate, would you kind of attribute that to the methods that you've already talked about in terms of why that has gone up about 16% in the last year? Well, I, th I think, it, you know, there's several things. One, you have the community calling in tips on things they've seen or heard. Um, we've outsourced our DNA, so we're getting those results back a lot quicker. And, you know, the just the efforts of our men and women uh, that work in the homicide office or, you know, diligently patrol their beats that are making these relationships and being able to, you know, get tips in. And, you know, uh, people that have, you know, ring doorbells, mess cam, different things like that, and they're sharing that with so, you know, our community is really taking a huge investment by reporting those things. How many unsolved homicides are there? Do you guys have a number for that right now? I don't have that number right now. Uh, we can get it for you. Um, and kind of following up on the New Year's uh, plan, so I know New Year's obviously is the time where everybody's celebrating and drinking, drinking and driving is something that, you know, people are paying close attention to or should be paying close attention to in terms of uh, safety. Are you guys planning to have checkpoints or anything like that? Uh, no, we, we don't have any checkpoints, but like I said, we have increased our traffic unit. So uh, we have officer, more officers in the traffic unit. I'd highly, highly encourage you, if, I mean, if alcohol's in your plan for New Year's Eve, get a designated driver. Um, I, you know, there, there's so many options that you have out there. There's really no excuse to drive intoxicated. Thank you all. Thank you.